Hey, what's up, guys? Yeah, so today I want to talk about his, uh, uh, his theorem, or main his. Hopefully, my pronunciation is correct. Okay, so yeah, and welcome to my channel. And uh, my channel is about mathematics and uh, computational complexity or whatever things I learned. And uh, there, there's uh, like thousands of videos that you can check out. So just for fun. And uh, this is my past 15 years learning on a lot of things. And I hope you guys subscribe to my channel. Okay, so let me just go through the this, this, uh, describe what the hell is this theorem is and uh, how to prove it. So basically, it uh, says that if set, set has many one to reduction to sparse set, then MP equals P. Okay, uh, yeah, before we start, let me just write down some definition. So if you have a language, basically it's the subset of zero one. So the language is a subset, uh, just basically a subset of zero one string. And uh, if, uh, if L intersection with zero one is N, uh, it's less than equal to, say N of C, then it's just equal to zero. Sometimes uh, usually people use big O, right? but now I'm sloppy, so I use N of C. Okay, so you can say that if N is large enough, there are always a C such that there's a good N of C. Uh, it's called sparse. It's called sparse language. That's sparse language. Okay. Sparse language. Okay, so the theorem, this theorem just tell you that if P does not accept this MP, then there is no uh there is no sparse MP complete language L. Okay, so uh, the proof idea is proof by contradiction, right? So we, we just proved that uh, uh, we assume. So we can assume there is a uh, MP sparse, or the, uh, the MP complete sparse language. Uh, so I suppose there is a MP complete sparse language L, and we can prove that set belongs to P. But then it will, so set has point over the algorithm, and P will become the same as MP. Okay, so uh, so basically it's simple, right? So we know that set is let's suppose L there is a some some guy which is which is indeed MP hard. So there's a polynomial reduction. So there is a polynomial reduction such that set is polynomial to P. So polynomial reduction to P. Uh we recall that uh, this means that uh, if X belongs to set, that uh, if only if R of X belongs to L. Basically, you, so we can translate the set problem into R of X, which is a big string L, and then from where you solve, we can solve it L. So this is a reduction. And uh, if X has dense N, then the R of X, by, by definition, is polynomial, so it should be, uh, it is R greater than zero, such that it's less or equal to N of R. And uh, the same thing is that I don't use PO, it's the same, you can use PO. Okay. So this is the very simple. So but there is a fact that you can check. So uh, let me just call it lemma. So this lemma is that if you take, let's say phi one, phi three, phi three of the phi t, which is a Boolean formula, as your set formula, and then you translate into phi one, phi two, phi three, and then you ask why is the r uh, intersection with the Okay, so you can ask what's the uh, what's the r intersection with the zero one to the n of r. Okay, and the provided that the uh, and then you ask what's the the okay, so you can uh, let me just write. So this is the a set. Uh, this is let me just define r to be the uh five i three uh. Let me just define R to be using R phi i, where uh, i from one to to uh, t, but and also uh, also uh, uh, phi i is satisfiable. Okay, and then you can ask. So phi uh, phi is satisfiable basically is the same as R phi i belongs to L. So if you take the this guy do the set, and then it's at most, right? By our by our definition, this guy R is a subset of L, and the L intersection of zero, one to n of R is at most n to the C of 
the length, so it's equal to the C to the R. Okay. So it's basically kind of CR. Okay. So now again, I want to take T to be one plus. Uh, sorry, I, I want to take the C times R, N of CR plus one. Let me just call it T. Okay. So now we so now we we have so this lemma will tell me the following fact whether uh uh so the first case is that uh, all these so basically uh, all these are phi one phi two and phi three of t are distinct so let's say suppose phi one phi two and t are distinct then uh, by the principle principle right principle principle tell that the uh, by uh since we have, we at most have n to the r uh, sorry n n to the c r so basically by principle principle uh let me just print or principle uh at least one of r of phi i do not belong to l basically it's the same as phi i is not satisfiable so phi belongs to unset. Okay, so it's this one, so there is this i. Okay, the second case that is that the uh, sum of them will be the same, right? So if there is a ij such that uh, r phi i equals r phi j, then this just did uh, notice that this does not tell you that phi i is the same as phi j, right? Because but it tells that it tells that uh, if phi i belongs to l, then if r if phi i belongs to l. Then this will implies that R phi i plus L. But then the but this also will imply R phi j because R phi i is the same as R phi j, and this will imply that the phi j belongs to L. And if phi do not belong to L, then the same thing will imply phi j do not belong to L. So if there is an ij such that R phi i is, uh, equals R phi j and i to not the same as j, it will tell you that either fi and the fj are both belong to set. Or uh, either fi and fj, not belong uh, both belong to onset. Okay, so this is the two simple facts. Okay, so once we have these simple facts, then the the proof will be simple. So the idea is that we want to construct some polynomial type algorithm for solving uh, for solving set. Okay, so notice that the idea is that uh, someone give you a large Boolean formula phi, and you can ask. Uh, there is a variable, right? So you can ask for x1, x2, uh, maybe up to x in. And then you can ask whether uh, you can use this to be reverse a lot of small variables. For example, you can ask whether x1 is 0 or x1 is 1. And then when you set x1 equals 0, then you will get another formula. So let's say this is called, let me just call this 511. Let's call this 512. Okay, then you can ask the same thing for x2 is 0, or x2 is uh, 1. X to zero, one. Then, then I don't uh right. Then I don't care about yeah. Let's so let's let me just call it by yeah. So I think this. Let me just call this level one. Let me just call this level two. So I call this two one, two, two three, two four. It's not important that uh, these labels are not important. I just want to call it. Let me just keep going. Okay, and uh, so. Uh, normally, if you want to solve this like this way, then you're asking the same thing. You just ask for ask the two to the end, right? So at, at, at the final layer, uh, these three will you see that the, the these will be two to the numbers. Sorry, uh, two to the formulas. There are two to the numbers, right? Because final is either one of the, if you can find such one, then this guy is satisfiable. If you see all zero, then this guy is all satisfied. All is satisfiable. And uh, so basically, you can see that uh, the obvious that yeah, five sets fiable, set is fiable. Uh, if there's a branch, right? Basically, you, so you can find branch, or basically, you can find some 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 guy, right? Which is set five. So there is a branch. There is a phi such that uh, it sets five. For example, if phi two three sets five, then sure, it will be sets five. Okay, right. So you so basically you need to it's, it's the same as you you found you, if you find some sub uh, formula which is satisfiable then 
satisfies the largest one. If all the subsets is, if all this, if we add one layer that everyone is not satisfiable, then five will be, cannot be satisfied. Okay, so uh, using this idea that one can actually do this a weird thing, which is very interesting. Uh, by so by this by using this reduction R, uh, one can uh, truncate, truncate the so if you do this one by one, right, you will get exponential growth. One can truncate. Okay, so it, so it, so if you build some two to L with this larger than T, then the one can oh larger than T, then one can truncate the the level be only uh to be only T. So basically, you can just chunk the number of the formula in level L to be only T. So basically, it's like if you grow, 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 grow up here, then this number is already larger than T. Then I can just do some truncation you know, and remove up T. And then here I keep removing, I keep removing, I keep removing. So this will be polynomial time formula. Uh, this will be polynomial time algorithm because at each level, then at most T. Okay, so at most T, right? That is a stack linear in A. Okay, so at most N of T. Right? It, okay. Uh, N of T and times the small sub formula, but this is polynomial time. Okay, so the proof idea is interesting. So we, we, we can do we, we can do some proving the proof proving the proof proving tree. Okay. So idea is weird. So let's so let's say uh let's say at, at, at some particular level. So let's see. Okay, so let's say at some particular level. L uh, where uh where two to L is greater than T. Then the uh, yeah, then I let's say okay, so I, I take the phi zero, phi one, phi two up to the phi t. So there's uh, some some re remaining one, but let's first consider the first t plus one, okay? And then let's consider phi one to be phi zero and the uh, phi one. So psi one is the phi zero, phi psi two is the phi zero. Or by two, the size is five, zero, or three, keep going, and the side t is five, zero, by t, or by t. And then you can come to our side i. So this is your point in your time. Okay, so in case, so if case one, they're all distinct. If they're all distinct, right, that means there, there is a existing side i which is unset. But this will tell by by the previous lemma. But this will tell you that the uh, this basically the phi zero and the uh, phi i is unset. Basically it's zero. So basically this means that the uh, uh this basically this means this 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 guy uh must be must be false. Okay, uh, this guy must be also be false. Okay, so I so I know that uh, I know that the phi zero uh, is false. So I can get rid of phi zero. I can just keep kill it, right? Because everyone contains phi zero. So I don't care, right? Phi zero, I can get rid of phi zero. So if if there is a if there is a phi i which is satisfiable, then fine. I just preserve it. Right? So I just preserve it. If if there is a so if there is a phi i which is satisfiable, then it's fine that I I, I can get rid of phi zero phi zero is unsatisfiable, which will not not uh, which will not uh, not affect our results. Right? So I can always get rid of phi zero. Okay. And uh, if so and if all the rest are unsatisfiable, then it's fine. I can always get rid of anything. So I, I get rid of phi zero. Okay, so uh, case two. Uh, so there is an i to another set of j, but psi i equals to psi j. Please tell you that the phi i to the n, sorry, n by 0 is the same as phi j n by 0. Okay, so if uh, phi 0, uh, phi 0 is the you know, set, that means that this equation is trivial. 
right? Because this guy knows what this guy's want, so oh shit. All right, it's trivial. Okay, so that means that I can get rid of five, right? Five zero is okay. So I should not get rid of five zero, but I can I can get rid of five. Right, but because it's five, right? Because the one can give you five. And uh because five zero is good, right? So if I preserve one thing which is said, one guy which is satisfiable, then it's fine. I can just preserve it and I can verify it's fine that I can keep going doing my conclusion. If phi zero is outside, this means that phi i equals to phi j, right? Because this guy is too long. No. Okay, so I can get rid of and I can these two are the same. So I can free to get rid of any one of them. So I can still get rid of phi i. Okay, so uh, by this proof that you can just get rid of the same thing. And uh, so at each step, if you are larger than t, then you just prove me. And larger than t, you just prove me, prove me, prove me, prove me. And uh, so uh, at each tree width, then you uh, at each level, you at most preserve t of them. And uh, so combine of this is combine every step, which is linear. Oh, sorry, the uh, point of your time. Okay, so this is a proof. Hope you guys like it.